Hello and welcome to my action research project, extended storytelling combined with collaborative strategic reading and its effect on student engagement and reading comprehension. My name is Tammy Osborne and I'm a master's student at the Southern Oregon University through the SLI Institute in Guanajuato. So, too many books or not enough bookshelves? The problem, when I started in the SLI program over two years ago, I also became a new Spanish teacher at my school. And when I took over the classroom, I inherited a stack of comprehensible readers and I created this beautiful library. But on the first day of school, when the students piled in, the first thing they did was grumble and complain. Overall, I noticed a low motivation to read and disengagement during any reading assignments that I did give to them. In addition, when they took the reading comprehension assessments, they would tell me that they just didn't understand anything when they were reading. At the same time that I was in school, I also took a class by Dr. Enrique Chacon when I was thinking about my action research project. And through Dr. Chacon, he really reminded me of the passion I have for reading and inspired me to think about using authentic materials in the classroom. So when I began to think of my problem for my action research, I really was looking at extended reading. I was looking at the extended reading of a comprehensible reader, but I wanted to see how I can incorporate authentic materials into my project. So when I looked at extended reading, which is reading for a longer period of time, the idea that I had was that the repetition of the same characters in a common plot over extended period, in addition to the exposure of repetitive structures and vocabulary, and in addition to using authentic materials in a collaborative discussion, I wondered what the impact would be on my students' engagement and their reading comprehension skills. So I came up with two research questions. One, will teaching through reading and extended storytelling combined with collaborative strategic reading have an impact on students' engagement? And if so, to what degree? And at the same time, with extended reading, with collaborative strategic reading, would it have an impact on reading comprehension? And if so, to what degree? The importance of my study first and foremost informed my classroom design to incorporate more reading into my curriculum. I also want to discover benefits of using, utilizing readers and reader, reading for the long term and how that would affect student engagement and reading comprehension. And I wanted to contribute to SLA research about reading combined with CSR in the L2 classroom. Therefore, I began to do some research. I did find only one study about comprehensible readers, and this was in relation to contextualized vocabulary, and that was by Lassar in 1998. Most of the studies that I found was on FBR, which is free voluntary reading, and that is for students who read at their own will and at their own pace, and usually there's no activity or test at, at the end of it. And many of the reports were the same, saying that FBR reading participants reported positive attitudes toward their reading and their learning. And this was apparent in the study by Akhamud and Schmidt in 2009. Uh, in 2015, Al-Kabi did a study that said that reading skills, like understanding main ideas, making inference, and guessing vocabulary, are es essential skills which readers need to develop in order to gain a high proficiency in the target language. And finally, there was a study by Cambria and Guthrie in 2010 that said the students need the will to read and to make an effort to make those connections with the story to become a good reader. So once I understood what the importance of reading was, I started to research collaboration and engagement in the classroom. Uh, there was a study by Boardman Moore Scornovaco that said utilizing collaborative strategic reading has a positive effect on student engagement when they were looking at the discussions within their peer groups. Now, collaborative strategic reading. This is defined by four strategic reading categories. We have get the gist, click and clunk, preview, and wrap up. In my research project, I focused on the preview and the wrap up phase, and we'll discuss that more moving forward. Uh, there was another study by Hitchcock, Devino, Kirk, and Wilkins, and Gerstead. Now, this study showed that CSR did not have an impact on reading comprehension. And this really sparked my interest. What is CSR and how can I use it in my classroom? I never heard of that before. And here we have two studies that have different results. Um, so I incorporated those into my research. Uh, finally, Jason Ranker, he did a study on reading 
out loud. Now this was with comic strips and he found out that um, students were engaged and um, it had positive effects on writing, thinking, and discussing the text. And Ray's Bracket Reverse White and Sullivanian 2012 had a study of making a connection between the emotional classroom, the climate, which is the making the connections with students, with uh, student engagement and achievement scores. And so that was really interesting since I wanted to see how the collaborative mixed with the reading would affect their reading comprehension scores. Uh, furthermore, I did do some research to see what tools uh, I needed to use. I found a study by uh, Nama Smid Hafsbani and Al Kamadi in 2019, whereas they utilized the FCE reading comprehension test, and that became my model for my test. It was measured opinion, attitude, purpose, main idea, and gist. And when I read the study, it reminded me of my assessment class by Dr. Mary O'Donnell, who really focused on the importance of creating fair tests and really looking at how we write our multiple choice and fill in the blank questions. And so this was a model inspired by the FCE as well as Dr. Mary O'Donnell from my SLI program. And um, moving forward, there's OWI. I wanted to do my study on an extended read, but I wanted to make a comparison. And so I decided to use Ben Slavic's OWI technique for story building, which is giving the students only one word, and then they collaboratively build a story orally in class. And so I utilized that as a comparison tool in my project. And lastly, Torres and Sefini adapted a study from a study by Rod Ellis in 2011, in which they used a student perceived Liker survey, and I also adapted that survey for my research project. To give you some context, this is my school. It's Alexandria Country Day School. It's a K through eight independent school in an affluent neighborhood in Alexandria, about 10 minutes from Washington, D.C. According to the records from this school year's last school year, there's 185 total students. The diversity dynamic is 71% white, 29% identified people of color. 0.04% are bilingual, and 17% receive some form of scholarship to attend the school. All students, K through eight, are required to take what we consider level one Spanish, and the school is committed to comprehensible input curriculum. The participants were my two sixth grade classes of Spanish one. In total, there's 25 students, 14 females and 11 males, and they were randomly assigned prior to the school starting. Within those classes, there was a large variety of language abilities, and this was another component for looking at comprehensible readers, because I wanted to see if that was something that would engage both the advanced uh, proficiency speakers and some students who just started in the school and had no prior Spanish knowledge. Uh, the instrument that I used was the book by Mira Canyon, which is Agentes Secretos y el Moral de Picasso. It is a comprehensible reader. Comprehensible reader is a book that generally created for second language learners and has a controlled vocabulary, typically with high vocabulary words and everything in context and repetitive. My study design. I started my project in mid-October. And if you remember, it's an extended read and the book read itself was for six weeks. I did have some short pauses for Day of the Dead and Thanksgiving holidays, but the actual intervention of reading the novel was six weeks. The three Likert surveys that I gave during my intervention, which is the Agente Secretos uh, Comprehensible Reader, the first survey was given after the first chapter, the second survey was given after the seventh chapter, and the final survey was given after the ending of the chapter, which is when we took the post test. And with the OWI technique, which was the three-day story collaboration, that happened when we came back from the winter break in January. It only was over three days. Two days, they compiled the story. And on the third day, I wrote the story out. So this is the first time they're reading the story. And then they took the post-test on the same day and their Likert survey, the same survey throughout. At the end of both interventions, I had a focus group with eight students for 25 minutes, it was a structured, sorry, unstructured interview. And throughout the entire action research project, I had a field journal with my teacher observations. 
I wanted to give you an idea of the collaborative reading strategies that I used. Preview, before reading, we have uh, authentic materials. I wanted to be sure that I used the authentic materials within my classroom design. Preview was done before the reading and we would look at websites, we would do some readings from the websites, we would look at some authentic videos, and we would do, for after the reading, you can see a picture here and another picture. Uh, a lot of times we would show pictures that either the students created or the author created, and we would have uh, an oral or written discourse about our wrap-up strategies. For the reading comprehension test, as I mentioned, it's based on the FCE model and inspired by Dr. Mary O'Connell. It had five questions for each of the post-test reading comprehensions, and there were two multiple choice, two opinion-based, one fill in the blank, and one question on inference. And here's an example from the OWI test. Engagement surveys. We had four identical like it surveys, and there was 10 questions each, five questions on reading, and five questions on their participation. Two questions were the reverse, so we used the reverse scale and I calculated those. And the final Likert survey did have two additional points. One was an open-ended question and two disagree or agree questions. And these were optional questions because I didn't want anybody that didn't feel inspired to answer the question to answer them. And out of the 25 students, 22 students uh, completed the optional questions. Uh, this is an example of what the Likert survey looked like that was adapted by Torres and Sabini in 2016. The analysis. I did two types of analysis for a mixed methods approach, the quantitative and qualitative data. In the quantitative data, I really looked at the descriptive statistics, the mean mode, median, and standard deviation of both the Likert surveys and the reading comprehension. And I ran paired t-tests to look for statistical significance. For qualitative data, I did inductive coding from the opening question, so putting the answers into categories. I created a graph for the agree and disagree question, and I wrote notes for my unstructured interview and teacher journal. So let's look at some of the findings. What happened? As I mentioned, we were doing the uh, statistical analysis on an Excel file, and one of the things I wanted to point out was the engagement surveys. We have the three for Gente Secretos and the engagement survey for the OWI story. You can see a progression here between the pre, mid, and post. And this is very similar to the one micro survey that was done for the OWI. The other thing I wanted to point out was the median score, or sorry, mean scores of the post tests. We have a 40 and a 37 for the post test. Um, so in both of the interventions, we have an 89 and 90% engagement level. And for both the post-test scores, we have an 80 and 76. Um, so these are very, very similar numbers. When we look at the uh, comprehension test, here's what it looks like on the graph. Um, so we have very similar numbers. And at first, when I first got my research, I said, okay, this is great. Everybody, or the mean score was a passing score. But then I really wanted to break it down, and I broke it down by students here because I said, wait a second, um, should I be saying that yes, the reading comprehension shows an impact on CSR and extended reading? But if you look at these numbers here and the amount of students that earned a passing score and the amount of students that got six year below, um, I do feel that you cannot say that it was impactful. Students to get an average score of a B or a high C would not show an impact on the scores. Um, there was some exciting news with the engagement surveys. As you can see, between the readings, pre, mid, and post, which is chapter one through 14, there was an increase each time. So I was excited about that. And as you notice, the Hentes and OWI had the same level of engagement, or student received engagement, um, when you compare the post to the post. So I ran the pair of t-tests to see if there was a significant difference. Um, so what's important here um, that is that we did have significant sig statistic significance when we are looking at the mid to the post survey for the agente secretos when compared to the reading comprehension test. So we have a 0.02198 from the mid 
survey to the post test, and then from the final survey to the post test, we're 0 0.01770. And we have the same statistically significant number, very similar from the OWI engagement survey to the post test at 0 0.00410. So there was no significant growth in reading comprehension from AS to OWI, nor between both the post surveys. Um, but there was significant growth between the mid and post engagement surveys when compared to the reading comprehension. So I wanted to give you an idea of the open-ended questions and how I categorized them. We have the reading itself, we have the collaborative discussions, and we have the learning itself. And what's interesting is that even though the open question allowed them to write anything, nobody wrote anything about the OWI which was a Chupa Chup story. Um, but there are some random answers. Um, I enjoyed the question. The book tells us a history. I like the teaching style. Um, one negative comment was, I wish we didn't talk so much and just read. And this is very similar to what I heard in the unstructured inter interview. Here are two sample questions out of the seven that I asked. And here are some answers. Uh, the novel, there was more time to pro process. I like the repetition. The reading comprehensions were not stressful. We knew the storyline so well. And uh, OWI, OWI was too wacky. We got caught up in the story. So once again, we have some positive and negatives, but not really leaning towards one way. And when you look at the agree and disagree question, you see that they favorably said 53% OWI and 47% for the novel. Um, but that number is so equal, I, I don't think you can say that it had any impact. I would say that an overview of the qualitative data is that they each liked both of the stories equally. So going back to my research questions, will teaching through extended storytelling combined with collaborative strategic reading have an impact, and if so, to what degree? The findings on the engagement were that they were participating collaboratively, as seen in the Leica survey, student comments, and teacher's journal. And this was evident in the increase of engagement in the AS survey between mid and post. The paired t-test analysis shows us that there was statistical significance. But while this is conducive to the importance of reading, it doesn't make a case for any one side of the storytelling. This is similar to the results of Ahmut and Schmidt that I mentioned, whereas they had also high results when they were measuring free voluntary reading. This makes a case for engagement and reading of all kinds. My research question two was questioning the impact that CSR strategies and extended storytelling would have on reading comprehension. And I found that while the mean and median score was a B and a high C, um, it showed understanding, but there really wasn't enough evidence to show an impact. The qualitative data across the board, the students were saying that they were learning and following along. So I think that that shows significance for me. Now, the findings is similar to the two studies that I mentioned in the beginning that had different results. One said that the CSR had significance and one said that they don't. So they present to me contradicting results, which just shows the variability in assessing CSR, considering that the students are unpredictable as far as their background, their likes, and their learning traits. When you look at engagement and comprehension together in the t paired t-tests, they are similar to the study by Reyes, where he made a connection with the collaborative discussions associated positively with student engagement and, and high achievement scores. So I feel that I did have a nice connection between the collaborative discussions and the engagement, even though I didn't have very high scores, I did have average scores. Uh, the limitations, well, my sample size was 25. Also, I did notice when I gave the first Likert survey that it was confusing for some of the students. I had a word in there like, this reading made you angry. And in retrospect, I would have liked to change, adapted that word to maybe disappointed or some other adjective that the sixth grades would have understood better. The reading comprehension test, I did choose to do that in Spanish. And now I feel like, was I really measuring their reading comprehension, or by having it in Spanish, was I looking more at the vocabulary? Um, so I probably would have asked the questions in English if I did it over again. And also, some of the students were frustrated with the questions on the inference and opinions. Um, on the test, 
If you were a student that had better metacognitive reading strategies, you may have done better on the test, which may or may not have anything to do with your comprehension. I didn't teach any metacognitive strategies, so that was something to consider. And overall, for future studies, I would have liked to have had a long-term element where I measured acquisition maybe after six months to see what output they were using from the story and the, the vocabulary that we reviewed. And also, I would like to do the same exact study but using authentic materials and see if that made um, a difference. Overall, my recommendations. The studies that I did and the results that I got recommend reading of all types in the classroom. So I recommend collaborative reads, authentic reads, and most importantly, I plan to use free volunteer reading in my classroom and in my curriculum. Another thing that I learned from my study as well as Dr. Julio Torres' class on task-based instruction and differentiation, I really think that there are a lot of opportunities for reading and differentiating with students who are at different professionally, proficiency levels in my classroom. I also love the collaborative reading strategy approach and especially incorporating authentic materials that really help to make our discussions rich and Overall, I want to say that my experience at SLI has challenged me to be a better, more thoughtful teacher and lesson planner, and in a sense, a researcher, but not a researcher for the numbers part, a researcher to really think about my students and what would make me a better and more effective teacher. You guys gave that to me, and I thank you and all the SLI staff for a wonderful program. Um, that has made a difference in my world and in my students. Thank you very much. Uh, here are my references, and at this point, I'm willing to take your questions. Thank you very much.